Joshua chapter number 7. We get reading verse number 1. The Bible says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua ran his clothes and fell to the earth upon the face upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we'd been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And, and what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, they've also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have taken the accursed thing, and have stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your good grace. We thank you for being our anchor of the soul, steadfast and sure within the veil. And God, we're thankful to be in this place tonight. Now, Father, bless those that are working with the children on the other side. Certainly, we pray for those young minds that the word of God would be fresh and, and precious to them. And God, any that have reached the age of accountability, I pray they'd be saved at a young age. I pray for those working with the teens, that Lord, you'd bless their efforts and help them to encourage and certainly build faith in those young people uh, so, Lord, they'll be able to withstand in the evil day. Now, Father, help us, Lord, to glean from the Word of God. Help us to grow by the, your grace. And bless now as only you can. Thank you for your goodness, your choice blessings, your long-suffering, and your tender mercy. Lord, speak to hearts now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want you to draw your attention, first of all, to the triumph that Israel had faced. Look back at chapter number 6, at verse number 20. The Bible says, So the people shouted when the priests blew their trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up to the city, every man straight before him. They took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. Look at verse 27. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. We find here that uh, uh, the Lord uh, had bid Joshua to go and take the city of Jericho. He told them to march around the city seven times uh, um, on the seventh day. March around one time each day in the seventh day. March around it seven times on the seventh time. The priests were to blow their horns, uh, and uh, the Lord uh, uh, certainly responded, caused the walls of the city to fall down flat, 
They went into Jericho and they utterly took the city. What a blessing. Now, my dear friends, none of that makes sense to you and I. Doesn't make sense to us how uh, 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 you'd have to march around a city uh, and you'd have to do it seven times uh, on the seventh day, do it seven times on that day, uh, and then God would run a big victory. Uh, friends, it's not up to you and I to decipher how God does things. Uh, we're to be obedient. When God says do it, uh, we do it, uh, and God gives the increase. He always honors his word. Uh, we see there was a great triumph. We see that Joshua and, and the people of Israel were famed throughout the land. Uh, uh, can I say from that victory, uh, 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 through generations, people feared the God of Israel. There's a great triumph. The time we get to chapter 7, I want you to notice the trespass. Look at verse number 1. The Bible says this, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the cursed thing, for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Before they went into Jericho, God told them not to take of the accursed thing. What was the accursed thing? Well, in Achan's case, it was a wedge of gold, a Babylonian garment, and some silver. He took it and he hid it in his tent. Thought nobody could find it. The Bible says, be sure your sins shall find you out. But can I say in our day and age, the accursed thing is anything that we partake of that comes between us and the commandments of God. Amen. They had a trespass. Hmm? Can I say a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Sure. 36 men died because, Brother Brian, he took of that accursed thing. And you and I are disobedient to God, people suffer. We find the trespass. We see the triumph. We find the trespass. Now notice the tragedy in verse number 4. The Bible says, So they went up thither, the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote them about uh, 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 30 and 6 men. The last clause of that verse says, And the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Isn't it amazing? In chapter 6, they're mighty, they're warriors. They overthrow the city. They take everything, that uh, 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 take the whole city. But by the time they get to uh, uh, chapter 7, just a few men causes them all to turn and their hearts melt like water. Can I say you better be careful? You can get so good at being a Christian, you'll stop praying. You'll stop reading your Bible. You'll stop trusting God. You'll think, well, God's been there for me before. God met with us before. God did this before. And then you show up and God's not within a million miles. I'm reminded of Samson. So many times they said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And then he destroyed the Philistines. Delilah tricked him three times. The first two he jumped up and he whipped the Philistines. Then he told her the secret of his strength. And then he woke up that third time and jumped up just like he'd done before, but he wished not that the power of God had left him. My dear friends, it is a dangerous thing to go out of the energy of the flesh. We see a great tragedy. Can I say this? Triumph too often is followed by tragedy because so many times we let our guard down. Hmm? You wrought a victory, you overcome... You get some faith, you gain some strength, you think, wow, I've arrived. No, you've never arrived. And if you're not careful, you'll rest on your laurels. And my dear friends, that never ends well. You've got to trust Jesus afresh and anew every single day. Amen. Now, don't die on me. I'm going somewhere tonight. No, I preached on sin this morning. I'm not going to preach on sin tonight. Miss Mary, you can perk up now, okay? All right? Well, she's over there already praying. It's not even invitation time yet. But I want you to notice the travail. Look what Joshua does. Verse number 6. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even tide. He and the elders of Israel put dust upon their head. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou 
at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites and destroy us. Would to God we'd been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Oh Lord, uh, what shall I say when, the Is when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies for the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, shall environ us round about and cut off our name from the earth and what wilt thou do unto thy great name? I mean Joshua, he's, he's pouring his heart out before God saying why in the world did you bring us across if we're going to get destroyed? What's this going to do to your name throughout the land. I mean, he's in travail. He's pouring dust on his head. He's uh, 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 agonizing before the ark of God, trying to pray and get a hold of God. Huh? Can I say, when tragedy comes, that is the best thing you can do. Amen. Is get on your face before God and get a hold of God. We see the travail. Now notice the truth revealed in verse 11. Verse 11, the Bible says this. This is God speaking to Joshua. He says, Israel has sinned. They've also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled uh, also, and put it even amongst their own stuff. We see truth is revealed. The Bible says, ask, and you shall find. Hmm? And can I say so many times, we don't want to ask God because we're afraid of the truth. But Joshua poured out his heart before God, and then God revealed to Joshua what the problem was. And God will do that. And when truth comes, then you can get that anchor for your soul again. Thank God for truth. Now he knew, knows what happened. Here before, I'm sure he's, he's questioning his own ability. He's thinking, man, I, I listened and hearkened to the spies. They said, just send up a couple thousand. There wasn't many. I should have sent the whole army. Maybe we wouldn't have had this tragedy. And, and he's questioning, and he's questioning uh, 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 the motives of why they were sent across. And he's questioning everything. He's pouring his heart out before God. And now truth's revealed. And Joshua said, it wasn't me at all. There's sin in the camp. When sin's in the camp, God can't bless. We see the truth revealed. Now notice the task in verse number 12. Look what the Bible says. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Now notice two things in that verse. God tells him that there's sin in the camp, he said, I could not be with them, and I won't be with you anymore. Now notice what he says. He says two very important things. He says, except who? Ye. Destroy. Who was to destroy the accursed? Joshua. God didn't, do, God didn't say, I'm going to go down there and destroy it. God said, you've got to destroy it. Can I say sometimes the power of God doesn't fall on your life because there's something God's put his finger on and you've got to deal with it. God's not going to remove it. You've got to deal with it. We, we like to sit back and, and sing and, and worship and, and talk about how wonderful that is, but can I help you? Something? We have a responsibility in this Christian life. And there are some things we have to deal with before we'll have God's blessing. Hmm? But notice what he says. He says, except ye destroy the accursed. Notice he doesn't call it the accursed thing. He said the accursed. You see, he not only has to get rid of that wedge of gold and that Babylonian garment, he's got to get rid of the one that stole it. You know, Achan and his whole family were burned at a stake because of the accursed thing that they stole. Sin will take you much farther than you ever wanted to go, friend. Sure. And it does affect folks around you. But I'm not going to preach on that. Y'all were already all jacked up. Should have got a nap today. Should be all right. I'm interested in verse number 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Now Joshua has just got word that 36 men died and that the army of Israel turned tail and ran 
and the people's heart melted like water, and he's all tore up, and he falls on his face, and he begins to inquire of God. He uh, uh, throws dust on his head. He's before the ark of God. He's praying. He's seeking God on this thing. And God comes by and says, get up. What are you doing? Isn't that what he says? Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? What are you doing on the ground? Get up. I'm going to preach with God's help on this thought. I'm going to preach on procrastinating prayer. Now listen, we are commanded to pray. Prayer is where the power of God comes from. It's essential. It's, it's vital in the Christian life. Yet there are times when our prayer becomes ineffective. Amen. There are times when your prayer is not what is needed. What God is telling Joshua right here, right now, your prayer is in vain. It's not time to pray. It's time to go to work. You have something to do if you want my presence. You see, so many times... We want to get out our little shopping list or we want to get in our little uh, uh, routine of now I lay me down to sleep, sleep prayer and expect God to show up. Sometimes God wants to see some movement before he shows up. Hmm? Uh, sometimes we pray when we should be doing. Hmm? Sometimes during the invitation period you bow your head there in the pew when you should be getting in the altar. Hmm? Sometimes you're praying when you should be going to somebody and telling them you're sorry or going to somebody and telling them you love them or you care about them. Sometimes it requires movement instead of prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer is vital in your life, but sometimes your prayer is nothing more than procrastination. You're putting off what needs to really be done. And so with that thought, I thought about several things when prayer becomes ineffective. And I say, first of all, prayer becomes ineffective when the answer's already been revealed. When God's already delivered the answer, why are you praying and asking for the answer? God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. If God has answered your prayer, you don't keep praying until you get a different answer. He's not going to change his mind. God will answer your prayer with yes, no, or not now. And if God says no, you can keep agonizing. That don't mean you're going to get a yes. When God's already answered, it's time to quit praying. It's time to get doing. Are you listening? Listen, there are some things God's already revealed. He's already revealed His will for your life in the Bible. So some of you are praying things that God's already revealed. Your, your prayer's ineffective. Now let me give you an example. Praying whether or not it's right to come to church. That's an ineffective prayer. He's already told us. Not forsaking the assembling of you. You don't have to pray about that. Hmm? Praying, Lord, should I give a tithe to the church? See, you don't even have to pray about that. It's already in there. We're going to bring our tithes and offerings on the first day of the week to the house of God. You don't have to pray about that. God's already revealed that. Uh, uh, how about, do I, have, do I have to forgive a brother or sister in Christ? Well, he's already revealed that. We're to forgive them 70 times 7. Uh, we're to forgive. Uh, uh, we're to esteem others better than ourselves. There's so many things he's already revealed, and you're wasting your time and God's time praying for things. Things he's already revealed. It's ineffective. It's kind of like the illustration. Flood happens. Guy gets to the roof of his house. And he starts praying, God save me. Here before long, here comes a guy in a canoe. Say, hey buddy, you need some help? You want in? He says, no, I'm waiting for God to save me. Well, not long, here comes a guy in a pontoon boat. Hey, buddy, you want to get on and get to safety? No, I'm waiting for God to save me. Finally, a guy in a helicopter comes over. He says, hey, buddy, you want off the roof? No, I'm waiting for God to save me. Well, the waters continue to rise. The guy dr drowns and dies. 
goes to heaven and says, God, why didn't you save me? He said, I sent a canoe, sent a pontoon boat, sent a helicopter, figured if you're too dumb to get onto those, you don't deserve to be on the roof no more and just let you come to heaven, huh? Well, sometimes that's how we are. God's already sent the answer, and we're still praying for God to send the answer. Your prayer's ineffective. Hmm? And I say this, prayer becomes ineffective if it defies the authority of God. If God has already established His authority on something, you praying against that is going to be ineffective. Hmm? Let me help you with some of them. God, should I use a different Bible? He's already gave His authority on that. Huh? God, is it okay to have women preachers? Well, He's already gave His authority on that. Women are to be silent in the church. Huh? Praying for things that defies the authority of God is ineffective. You're just wasting your time. God's never changed his mind upon anything that he's pinned down. It's impossible for him to lie. And if God did something that goes contrary to his word, that'd make him a liar and make our Bible fake and it'd make everything we stood on of no effect. Hmm? You know what is really wrong with a lot of these feel-good churches? They're always changing the rules. They're always changing things to fit society. Listen. I've never been a Catholic. Hallelujah. But I've watched the Catholic Church from afar because the Bible has a whole lot to say about some of the things they teach. And can I say the Catholic Church, especially in the last 15 years, have changed so much because they're losing people in droves and they're doing anything to get a dollar. Hmm? Used to. People that were divorced were excommunicated from the church. Now they're actually ordaining some of them to serve in the church. Now they're allowing homosexuals in. Now they're flirting with women priests. Now they're doing all kinds of things because they are losing people and they're trying to keep up with society. Hmm? But don't look down on the Catholics. Huh? So is every other denomination out there, including the Southern Baptists and some independent Baptists. Hmm? God never has changed his mind. about Jeremiah said, you know, to get to the old past, that's the good way. Huh? We don't need something new. We need to stick with what is old, what has been established, what God has used and ordained. When you pray about things that God has been opposed to, it's ineffective prayer. It's a waste of God's time. I thought about this. Prayer becomes ineffective when there's an act that must be done. Look at verse 12 again. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed, accursed thing from among you. Hmm? Listen. When there's an act to be done, you continually praying about it isn't going to make the thing better. I preached one time about having ostrich Christianity. We want to bury our head in the sand and hope it goes away. Things don't get better when you bury your head in the sand. If you need proof of that, look at our society. For 75 years, Christians have been quit being Christian in public. We've allowed the public to dictate to us what the rules are. We've allowed them to take prayer out of schools. We've allowed them to take Bible teaching out of the schools. You know Benjamin Franklin said in public school that you couldn't have a public school except the Bible be taught, hmm? especially the Ten Commandments. Benjamin Franklin, one of the fathers of our country, and yet we sit down and take it that Bible don't have to be taught in school anymore. Can I say? They say you can't pray in public, and so we don't pray in public. Everything society says we can't do, we don't do, and then we'll come to church and say, boy, things are getting bad. Well, why don't you be Christian out there and see what happens? Good. Hmm? Good. When there's an act to be done, praying about it ain't going to get it done. You've got to do it. 
God expects us to do what we're supposed to do, then he does for us what we can't do for ourselves. Amen. Hmm? If you're not faithful, things aren't going to get better in your life till you become faithful. That's, right. so that's just the way it works. You reap what you sow. It amazes me how some folks just come to church every once in a while. When they come to church, they talk about how rough they've got it. Well, what do you expect? Hmm? You expect the blessings of God? When you don't frequent his house, why should he frequent your house? Sure. Hmm? And you can pray about it all you want to. God bless me, God bless me, God bless me. That's idle words till you become faithful. Right. Hmm? It's very simple. When we start practicing the Bible, the promises of the Bible will be practiced in our lives. Yep. Hmm, but until then, you can pray till the cows come home. And you're not going to get God's attention. Can I say this? It's just procrastinating prayer. Prayer becomes ineffective when an accursed thing dwells within us. Hmm? Look at verse 13. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. When you have something in your life that is hindering the blessings of God, your prayer will become ineffective until you do away with that thing that God's against. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Amen. And when you have an accursed thing in your life, when you have something that is between you and God... You can pray and pray and pray. But until you get rid of that thing God's put his finger on, you'll never have the blessings of God. Amen. So many Christians live defeated lives because they allow something to come between them and God. Hmm? Friend, I don't care what it is. If it's keeping the blessings of God out of your life, you don't need it. Amen. It's working against you. It is counterproductive for your life listen it's hard enough having victory living by the Bible in this world and all that we go against and all that we're faced and all of, uh, of the anxiety and the depression and, and the, the wicked works of the devil coming against us uh, and constantly being a barrage of all kinds of things I mean it's, a, it's, it's all you can do to have joy in your heart but you allow sin to get in your life or something that God's against, you won't have joy. Amen. And can I say, too many Christians are anemic spiritually because they got something in your life that God's not pleased with. Amen. And all the while, you're praying for God to do something tremendous. He can't. Because we've tied his hands with things that displease him. See, we live in a day and age where everybody's, well, it's okay. God loves you just the way you are. He does love you. But he's not going to bless you if you belong to him and you've got something in your life that displeases him. It's not going to happen. And we, we pray for a revival. We pray for a move of God. We pray for the power of God. And we can't have those things until we do business with God and get rid of the thing that's hindering his hand. My dear friends, let's quit procrastinating in our prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When you're right before God, God hears your prayer. And God moves mountains. And God blesses abundantly, pressed down, shaken, bubbling over is your cup. But when your uh, life is hindered by something and you don't do business with God with it, all your prayer is doing it's just becoming vain works. There are people, I've heard them, and you've heard them, they say, Christianity doesn't work. I prayed, and it didn't happen. Christianity's been working for 2,000 years. God's been answering prayer for 2,000 years. So if it didn't work for you, you didn't work at it. There's something in your life that God's not pleased with. Let me say this, I'm about done. I don't know why I'm going this just hit my mind. We enable people in this day and age. But Jack, 
your family that's not in church, the worst thing you can do is pacify them in their sin and tell them it's okay. You need to live a life before them that says Jesus changes people. That's what Geronimo said. Geronimo was a medicine man besides a warrior chief. And oh, he had great fame because people uh, uh, appealed to his ability with, with medicine and works to be able to help folks. They thought he was a magic man. And 80 years in this world, and trusting those spirit gods, left his soul dark. But he saw something in these folks that were believing them Christian missionaries. He said, they've got something that I don't have. See, we can enable and pacify lost family members and lost people and kind of accept them in their sin and accept their lifestyles and all that kind of stuff. And all that's going to do is keep them lost. When you show them what Jesus can do in a life, all be kind to them, all love them, all let them know Jesus loves them, but also make a stand against their sin, they'll see a difference. You know who pacifies sinners? Satan. If it feels good, do it. What they need to see is something different in us. We're the same way in our churches. Oh, we'll pacify. Well, so-and-so had bursitis. Well, bless God, I got itises too. And so do you. If you're over 50, you got a bunch of them. Uh, what's that got to do with loving Jesus? In fact, you think Jesus knew you'd get your itis before he saved you? Sure he did. So why in the world would we hold those things up before God? Well, I just can't. Well, I'm glad on the way to Calvary, Jesus didn't stop and say, Well, you know what? This kind of hurts a little bit. I, don't, I, I think I'm taking the day off. Well, I'm glad he didn't do that. Amen. But see, we'll pacify people. We allow them to embrace their cursed thing, and we let them glory in it. God help us. We should show them the difference. Show them your bursitis in Jesus is better than bursitis without Jesus. Are you listening? Just trying to help you. Huh? So many times people have just, we've just pacified them off. Well, God doesn't. So why should we? Let's quit procrastinating. Let's get some power. Power starts with doing business with God, getting rid of those things he's not pleased with, serving him, seeking him. And letting him reign in our life. Be God in our life. When we put him first, there's no telling what he'll do. Amen. But God help us. When we allow things to go on, knowing that God's not pleased with them. And just expect God to just wink and overlook and let us live how we want to do. It's kind of like that song Brother Clint sings. That's a secret place. God says, I want that, that room in your heart. We never give him the key. God help us. I wonder if it's not. You praying in vain? Here's God hear your prayers. You know what a miserable Christian is? One that prays and God don't hear them. There's a time in my life I was that way. I'd pray knowing it wouldn't hit the ceiling, let alone heaven. Can I say that's the most miserable place a Christian can be? You know where the best place a Christian can be? Is say, Lord, and the Lord says, Yes. Hmm? I like it when it's that way, when he's waiting to hear from me. How about your prayer life tonight? How about your life tonight? You got joy? So I got problems. Well, you can still have joy and have problems. That's okay. Huh? Does God hear your prayers? Or are you agonizing in the ground and God's saying, get up, there's something you've got to do and take care of. God help us to do our part. I promise you he'll do his part. Don't procrastinate with Christianity. Put God first and watch and see how business will pick up in your heart and life. All right, I'm done. Brother Ray, come get a song. Maybe you need to come pray. Maybe you need to thank him that he hears your prayers. Maybe you need to come tell him you love him tonight. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart about something else. Well, go take care of it. Do whatever he said. Maybe tonight you need to go tell somebody they've been a real blessing. I don't know. But if he's told you to do something, don't pray about it. Do it. There, a lot of folks are coming. Brother Ray's picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. 
Lord, I don't want to procrastinate in the things of God. And Lord, there's been times I've been guilty of it. So God, help us, Lord, to certainly seek your face and put you first in our lives. Be obedient to those things you tell us to do. And God, help us just to mind the Lord. Lord, I know on this Sunday night, these that sat in here tonight, uh, they love you. They're faithful. They care about the things of God. So God, bless them. Help them. If there's any procrastination, Lord, help them to put that behind them and under the blood. And God, help them to serve you faithfully. And God, bless them for it. Have your way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.